Hi, everyone. Welcome to our live 10 questions with series during which we sit down with founders, entrepreneurs, and business leaders to ask about their journeys and the lessons they've learned along the way, of course, to impart some advice on all of us in our individual journeys, too. Today, we are chatting, chatting with the founder of DP Hugh, Donna Polad. DP Hugh provides high quality products designed to manage hair color between professional salon visits. That's something I know I for sure needed, especially over the past 18 months when uh, salons were shut down. It was uh, a product I actually did use. Um, so I'm excited to dive into it. And, and Polad will recall how she came up with the idea the moment that catapulted the brand to new levels of growth and how they've adapted to address supply chain issues that I know so many businesses have been facing, uh, especially lately. She'll also dive into their decision to go with private equity funding and how NetSuite has benefited them in that process. Now, I'm super excited to get to it and invite her on, but before we do, a reminder to everyone who is tuning in right now, if you have any questions throughout our conversation, use the comments. We will get to as many questions as we possibly can at the end of our conversation during a live Q&A. And if you don't have any questions, then just tell us where you're tuning in from. Shout out to us. Give us a hello, a ni hao, a ciao, a bonsoir. Um, we want to know where you guys are tuning in from, and we'll shout out right back to as many of you as we possibly can. Now, without Further ado, please join me in a very warm welcome for DP Hugh founder, Donna Polad. Hi, Donna. How are you? Hi, Kendall. I'm great. Nice to see you and thank you for having me here today. Of course. Where are you tuning in from? I am in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Amazing. What's, uh, what's the weather like over there right now? The weather, it's been actually very warm here. For oh. summer, even now, you know, it's in the 70s all week for Minnesota, early October. It's wow. pretty warm. So, yeah, that's great. That's yeah. great. I'm actually joining you from Santa Monica, California. Um, it's, you know, California, we always have warm weather, but it was a little crazy earlier this week. We had like thunder and lightning storms, which we don't get very often. Um, so kind of crazy up and down right now. It's a, it's a crazy time. Um, but we're not here to talk about weather. I just was curious what it's like over there right now. <laughs> I uh, gave a brief introduction to DP Hugh, but as the founder, I'd love to hear your elevator pitch. Well, DP Hugh is a hair brand and our niche, our focus is really about how to keep your hair color looking fresh between salon visits. And that really means that if you go to a salon and get your hair colored, the minute you walk out, you're feeling like amazing. Your hair looks awesome. You feel fresh and great. But as time goes on, that feeling starts to fade. Your hair starts to fade. Your roots grow in. You know, all kinds of issues pop up, as we know. And so we want you to look as great as you did when you left the salon until the time you go back, no matter how much time in between that is. I love that. Um, so I want to dive right into our 10 questions because my first question is really, about how you came up with this brilliant idea. What was the gen genesis of this? And how has it, how, how did you go about transforming it into a full blown business? Well, the genesis of the idea really was, you know, kind of born out of my own frustrations. And for me, that frustration was not being able to get to a salon when I was desperate. So I think everybody knows that feeling of not being able to get to an appointment when you really need it most. I, I personally is usually fine with delaying, like, say, a doctor's appointment, but my hair appointment, never. And yeah. so that, I mean, that frustration sort of culminated uh, at one particular point in time and just stayed with me, and I just could not get loose of it. So yeah. I just became obsessed with finding a solution. And when I realized there was nothing really satisfactory out there, I just decided to set out and create it. That, I mean, it makes so much, it's funny you say this. Just last night, I like w couldn't sleep because I was like, when am I gonna get in? I haven't made an appointment with my hairstylist. We have this big event called Sweet World at NetSuite coming up in a week and a half. And I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't done this. When am I gonna get in? I was like having full blown panic at like midnight last night. I texted her like, sorry for the late text. Can I please get in soon? So 
I totally get it. I'm the same way. Pushing that off is just not something that, you know, I, I like to do either. So I love that this came out of need. I love that it was a personal need for you as well. Um, and then DP Hugh also enlisted celebrity stylist Justin Anderson as a co-founder, as well as a myriad of influencers pretty early on. Um, how did you meet Justin Anderson? And how did it like, how did that give the brand a, a competitive edge? Uh, Justin and I met through a mutual friend. And, you know, at that time, you know, I recognized that I was the consumer and I could authentically speak to that very easily. But I was not a professional hairdresser. And what the business needed was the right person to essentially be my other half, you know, which is what I found in Justin. He was an A-list colorist. He was coloring the hair of Jennifer Aniston, Miley Cyrus, Gwyneth Paltrow, and so many more, you know, sort of A-list celebrities. Mm -hmm. uh, and so clearly he had a great resume and yeah. he was working in a salon and I went and had my hair done by him just to kind of get to know him a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, uh, he was just a great guy with a great personality and not too bad to look at either. And yeah. uh, so I thought, okay, well, maybe, maybe Justin is my guy. So, yeah. you know, we went out to dinner. I wasn't sure what he would think about the concept of DPU as he was working in a salon. Um, but when I told him about it, his eyes lit up and he truly understood the need for women to have the tools to keep their hair color looking great from the moment they left his chair until they came back. He, you know, he worked with so many actors that would go off on a, you know, shoots and movie sets, whatever, and they just needed to keep their hair color looking good for possibly months. So he would package up these homemade kits for them. And, uh, and in his experience, he just clearly understood, you know, the need for this. So yeah, really between Jess and myself, you know, we feel like we understand you from, you know, in the chair and behind the chair. And yep. I guess not to mention that we also kind of represent different generations. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, right. I I happen to know that one of Justin's clients and good friends is Kristen Cavallari, who we've yeah. worked with quite a bit uh, on that suite. I've actually um, had the pleasure of interviewing her a couple of times. So, and her hair is always looking great. And I know you guys have collaborated with her um, yeah. on the blonding brush. So very, very, very cool. Good point, um, I feel to mention Kristen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have definitely collaborated with her. Yeah. So what mm -hmm. was unique mm -hmm. about DP Hughes' original go-to-market strategy that kind of differentiated itself from competitors? Well, originally what we did is we created a unique retail concept, you know, where the experience replicated a salon experience. So when you would go to a salon and you'd sit down and talk to a licensed hairdresser about your hair color, they would formulate your color, then they would apply it. But in our case, we had the customer take this beautiful package home with them and apply it themselves on their own time. So through that experience, we learned a lot about our customers and their needs and their fears and desires. And uh, But having you know, bricks and mortar is a, in and of itself, you know, a challenging model. And so uh, when when we had the opportunity to pivot, I know we're gonna get to Ulta and, you know, retail partners, uh, that was, that was uh, something that really was important to us. Yeah, I, I wanna talk about Ulta. I know, you know, DPHU really kind of took flight, if you will, after striking a deal with Ulta, which I've read in my research is one of your favorite stories. Can you tell us what happened with that and how the company navigated such a catapulting experience? Well, it was, um, you know, as I said, we had a bricks and mortar concept and, yeah. and we were dealing in, in all over hair color at that time. And also developing unique and differentiated products that we felt really addressed all the things we were hearing from women like, uh, you know, hair color fading and they wanted something more natural and they wanted to maintain their color. So we developed a product, um, we call it ACV, it's apple cider vinegar hair rinse, which was yeah. our original apple cider vinegar product. And that product was really a game changer. 
And the fact that we were addressing um, this sort of this in-between salon visits niche really attracted the attention of Ulta and Sephora. So we had the opportunity to go to Ulta and meet with them. And we had a meeting in Chicago with them for an hour and a half. And we came out of that meeting and they, they were like, we love it. They had 875 stores at the time. They said, we want four shelves, all stores. Can you do that? And this was in October. And can you be in our warehouse in March? And Whoa. sure, of course we can do that. And I just, I so clearly remember standing outside the, the doors outside of Ulta's corporate headquarters. And, and we, we were like, okay, what just happened? And <laughs> we don't know how to do this. So, yeah. But we figured it out. You know, you, you just keep putting one foot in front of the other and you find people and you figure it out. And, and we delivered. I mean, we worked very hard and we delivered. So uh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And I know, you know, again, in some of my research, I've read that one of your, you know, kind of biggest pieces of advice is to have the right team to make sure that, you know, yeah. you can take your business to the next level like you did in this experience. So what would be your advice in hiring the right team to scale the company? What What is the DPQ leadership team getting right? Um, well, for I mean, first, I think the most obvious is just surround yourself with people who complement your skill set and, you know, what you bring to the business. I guess I've learned, you know, sometimes the hard way how critical it is to find the right combination, you know, with the right personalities, with rock star skills that yeah. fit in culturally. Yeah. Uh, so the culture of our company is really critical to me. And I, I care deeply, not just about our internal relationships, but I care just as much as about the, the external relationships we have with all our partners, our contract manufacturers, our agencies, suppliers, and of course, you know, your team at NetSuite. So um, I really look for people who have brought uh, beauty experience and creativity and are whip smart and uh, all the things that, you know, that I'm not. <laughs> I, you know, uh, in particular, corporate experience, which, which I really have none. So, yeah. you know. I'm truly that entrepreneur who is, you know, well, wait a minute, why can't we do this? We're just going to do it, you know, kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that what the leadership team is getting right, uh, one thing is focus. Um, you know, we're focused on our strategy and walking the line of sticking to our plan. But, you know, we have to be flexible enough to pivot when necessary. Yeah. So that's a slight pivot. Um, there's a lot of noise, a lot of competition in our industry, which has become, you know, very, a very attractive space to celebrities and influencers and big corporations and small companies. And I just read today now, you know, Meghan Markle is now going to come out with a, with a beauty brand. I mean, it's just oh, every day something's coming out and it's, you know, it's kind of a battle for the consumer out there. So, you know, our team is great at staying on top of all of that noise, but not getting distracted by it. Yeah, so that, I absolutely. think that's an important thing. And, and this, you know, things change all the time, all, almost yep. daily, not just in the industry, yeah. in all the areas we touch. Social media, yeah. just, you know, it's a constant maneuvering, you know? Well, and things are constantly changing right now more more than ever before i mean the business environment is constantly changing and i love that you noted flexibility because that's something that we're talking a lot about with our customers here at netsuite is these, this idea of having the flexibility to see new growth opportunities and be able to take them on um and some of that um has to do with you know the way that you're operating and uh we've obviously seen some you know crazy times over the past 18 months um, with DPU. How did salon shutdowns last year impact the company? Well, you know, we're one of those businesses that experienced, you know, exponential growth that really honestly took us all by surprise. Our, yeah. our business, yeah, shot up overnight. 
And, you know, we could see that we were not going to be able to stay in stock where we thought we had a year supply of product. It was clear we were going to be out of stock in a matter of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so our COO, Marty Oakner, uh, you know, jumped into action and pulled the trigger on placing a safety PO from our manufacturer. We have our color products are manufactured in Italy, you know, which was at that time the hotbed of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, you know, placed this PO, they produced it, got it ready to go to ship by air. It missed the flight. So we had to, uh, uh, they closed the airport in Italy. So then our head of supply chain called a trucking company, convinced them to reroute and get our product to Brussels. <laughs> and it was craziness. But we were fortunate enough that we, we ultimately got the product and it kept us in stock throughout, you know, those sort of wild months during COVID. Yeah. Well, and how do you handle, you said you saw kind of some unprecedented growth. How do you, how did you handle that growth? How did you respond to that? I mean, this is like, where I go back to kind of our team and our partners yeah. and everyone was having challenges, whether they were overwhelmed, you know, for their, in their businesses or they had come to a screeching halt. So yeah. that said, I mean, they all came to the plate and supported us and in turn, you know, we supported them um, mm -hmm. from our suppliers to our 3PL team. I mean, they worked around the clock and kept us in business. It was, it was pretty remarkable. What, what, I mean, I won't, you know, go into all the details of what they all had to do to yeah. in order for us to be able to ship our product, but it was, uh, it was really incredible, you know, calling in friends and family and, you know, all the COVID restrictions and, it was wild, but wow! But here you are. Here we here are. We are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, switching gears here a little bit. I had mentioned earlier we were going to talk about you know kind of how DPU has gone the the private equity route. Um, what led you to decide to partner with private e with a private equity firm, um, Prelude Growth Partners? Well, I had met informally with a variety of firms over the years. You know, we were quite a differentiated uh, brand and business. And so, you know, people were interested and, in, you know, we were, we were, you know, so we would take meetings and calls and things, but uh, I, I felt like we would know when the time was right for us to actually bring on a partner. And a real yeah. key for us was uh, when it was time when we really need growth capital and we needed a strategic partner. Partner. We really wanted a strategic partner, not just the capital. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had met Prelude Growth, you know, I think in 2018. And um, so all we kind of in the back of my mind, for me, I, I thought they were fantastic. Young, new firm, two women, uh, really, again, incredibly experienced and smart. And so... Yeah. You know, when the time was right for them and for us, we were able to, to form that partnership. So we've been super happy. And how was the fundraising process? What led you to, you know, I know that in kind of in the midst of that or as a, you know, result of that, you ended up changing your accounting system after going live. Yeah. So we, um, you know, we, we knew we needed to change our accounting system. So, you know, we'd had multiple problems with our old system, you know, too many transactions for the system to handle. It was slow, required this remote desktop hosting, which drove everybody crazy. And most importantly, it didn't have a good enough inventory planning system, you know, so it, it made it hard to keep track of all of our components and finished goods across multiple locations. So uh, I know that Marty looked far and wide for a new system and ultimately really believed in NetSuite and selected NetSuite. And it's been great. I, you know, I, it's, you know, the browser-based login means it's easy access for all our users. The system's mm -hmm. fast, it can handle millions of transaction lines a month. You know, it, it, it enables us to maintain good financial and operation, operational processes and keeps track of things like approvals for purchase orders, bills, et cetera. Um, I personally don't work with it, but I know that I can tell you 
that our team our team has just absolutely been raving about it. it it's really changed uh, our business for the better. That's great, and I'm sure you know having being able to provide your partner you know Prelude the visibility that they need into the numbers and how you're performing and everything is is extremely beneficial in that partnership. Um, final question here, Donna, before I open it up to the audience, um, if you are tuning in, a reminder to use the comments to ask Donna any questions you may have. Um, if you don't have any questions, just shout out to us. Tell us where you're tuning in from. We'd love to shout out to you right back. But for now, Donna, question number 10, what are the benefits of going the private equity route versus other sources of capital infusion in your opinion? Well, I think that, um, you know, as I mentioned before, for us, it was not just capital. It was, you know, the other priority was a strategic partner. So for us, this particular going with private equity and going with this particular firm for us just made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I could tell you, you know, there's tremendous benefits. There's, you know, uh, their wide network, their experience in the space, uh, their understanding of how to grow a business. Uh, I mean, we have a very talented team, but I've always believed in, you know, the more more heads in the room, the better, you know? Yeah. But I want to hear all these opinions. And yeah. uh, so that... So for us, this worked out great. Yeah. Well, I think that's such a critical, you know, piece of advice for any entrepreneur, really, if you are bringing on whoever you're bringing on to par partner with you on the fundraising side, you know, make sure that they can, in fact, partner with you, that they can help you not just in that stage, but as you continue to grow and level up stage after stage after stage. So great advice, Donna. Thank you so much for that. That is it for my questions, but we do have some questions Coming in here from the audience, one question here from Steve in Ventura County. How does it feel to have built this organization? <laughs> That's a great question. It's incredible to me, honestly. You know, I, I couldn't imagine that, uh, you know, this is where I'd be sitting today with this business that, you know, gets me up every day, has really broadened, um, my scope, my understanding of, uh, you know, not just the world, but, you know, I've, I've met so many great people and formed so many great relationships over the past number of years. Uh, it's, it's remarkable to me that, that, uh, that you know, I, I founded this business and we're still here today. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. It's awesome. Um, I actually, this is an interesting question. Uh, another one coming in here. Why do you manufacture in Italy? Uh, the, our Italian manufacturer, manufacturing partners are, they were our original partner. You know, they were, the Italians make amazing hair color. They just have a talent at it. They're, you know, they make the most beautiful hair color. And so in searching for a company to partner with, uh, I was presented with, you know, all, all these different hair color manufacturers. And they weren't all Italian, but um, mm -hmm. this one in particular really stood out to me. It was mm -hmm. very modern. It was very, uh, I could see that the, the richness of the colors, I knew that, you know, it was super gentle, all their colors. Anyway, it's, they make, help make us beautiful products. So that's why you like, and we've stuck with them. You know, we haven't, we could manufacture here in the States, which would actually be in a lot of ways, a whole lot easier. And, mm -hmm. you know, a whole lot less in shipping costs and air freighting, you know, when, when we get in a crisis and that kind of thing, but we just can't walk away from, um, from that partnership and, and their ability to, to help us with these products. Yeah, that quality is so, yeah. so important. Yeah. I think we have time for one more question. I love this one because I want to know too. Um, what's your favorite product? Well, I would have to say beyond our root touch, which I need and I use, and that's what started the company, uh, it would be our better minute hair rinse. 
we just made it a new life formula uh, for fine hair types. Um, but that hair rinse is a kind of a game changer. It's really, you know, changed the quality of my hair, the texture of my hair. Uh, it helps retain my color. You know, I know my scalp is clean. There's so many benefits to it. So uh, definitely, I would say that the ACV hair rinse for me. Love that. I actually, I said I had one. <laughs> That's great. I, I love that. Um, I'm like, now I'm like, it's now on my list. Maybe I'm going to add that to my list of things that I'm going to purchase from you guys. Um, we have another question coming in that I want to get to really fast because it actually is a good one. So I'll, this is really the last one though. Um, Donna, how have you managed to maintain energy and motivation uh, for yourself and your team in order to be a leader in this space? And this is a question that you know, people are asking a lot of leaders, especially after what's been a challenging 18 months um, for everyone, not just, you know, not just business leaders, for everybody. So curious how you're uh, managing that. Um, you know, it's, uh, it, as you know, it, it has, there's a lot of challenges to a business yeah. and a lot of things that keep you up at night. And like, sometimes you question yourself, is that the right decision, not the right decision? Um, mm -hmm. And I would say that uh, our team, I, I have so much confidence in, in our team, in our executive team, in, in, in everybody who works for TPU, that that really does, that motivates me and, you know, wants me to be, to, you know, be able to provide a successful growing business for everybody in our company to be proud of and, and to work for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. I think that's great. And on that note, Donna, I just wanna say thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for sharing the DP Hughes story and your story and all of your advice. We so appreciate it. Thank you, I appreciate your time. And as always, thanks to all of you for tuning in. We'll be conducting our next customer interview or multiple customer interviews um, actually from Sweet World. If you cannot attend Sweet World in person or you haven't registered to attend in person yet, no worries because you can actually join us for our virtual event, Sweet World On Air. You can register at NetSuite sweetworld.com, all one word, netsweetsweetworld.com. Uh, we will leave a link to that in the comments of this live. So be sure to register for Sweet World on air now if you haven't already. And then we will be back from Sweet World Live. And after that, a couple weeks later with our next customer. So thank you all so much for tuning in and we'll look forward to seeing you in the future. Bye.